Welcome back to Nomad Boat Building. I'm Mark Rudin, and today I'm building the Catalina Wherry. We're going to start fitting frames into this boat. Now, the term frames refers to structural elements that connect the shear to the keel laterally across the boat. Some people refer to these as ribs. Now, there's a difference in opinion about terminology with these, and some people will say that they are only ribs if they're bent to shape and frames if they're sawn to shape. When I went to boat building school, we referred to them all as frames, regardless of whether they were bent or sawn. All right, let's get right into it, but we're going to start with some spiling or pattern making. Okay, and I'm, uh, I'm making some patterns for frames. So I was thinking about putting sawn frames in here, but in order to eliminate short grain, I thought I would put a like a three eighths or a half inch layer of laminations on the inside so that it continues the grain all the way through. So the other option is I could make molds laminate to those molds and then saw those to shape but it means creating more laminations which i don't know i hate it i hate trying to decide what i like what i want to do if i saw them the sawn frames give me sort of my instant mold for the laminations however it's an it's a negative mold it's like a female mold which is not great for laminating now in a perfect world you will have grown crooks that is a limb of a tree that is grown to the shape of the boat at any particular location and the frame would be sawn from that so that you get no joints throughout the whole side of the frame and you would have them bilateral so you'd have one from one side and one from the other and you connect them at the keel that would be the ideal not always easy to achieve in fact most often not easy to achieve so you would make up these frames out of separate sections and join them together now you might hear the term double sawn frames now that means that these frames have been made up of two layers of material that allow you to have shorter sections of wood that are cut from straight material and they're made up of little pieces that form the whole shape of the boat all the way around its turn of the bilge but then you double them up and you stagger the joints. They call each of those little pieces futtocks. Now I'm going to be doing something different in this boat. I'm going to be making up sawn frames that are made up of straight pieces of wood with a simple kind of scarf joint at the turn of the bilge and a little gusset that fills in the gap, which isn't the best choice, but I'm going to back that up by laminating a few strips of wood to the inside and that's going to join them all together and make for a nice structural product that's nice and light and easy to shape. I'm just going to run these square to the shear planks as opposed to trying to uh, go dead across. So it, so the, the frames are for the most part are going to be the face of them is going to be just square to this plank and um, so it's not going to be beveled following the whole inside shape of the planking. Okay, the way I've been doing this is I've been starting out by taking this little angle block clamping it to the shear and fitting my first little piece of uh, patterning material and I'm coming a quarter inch up from my plank lap just to make uh, room for the fillet and then from that I'm just adding a, um, a stick onto that. I'm just hot gluing it, everything together. I'll just touch the stick to my inside of my planking down there. Planking to bottom joint and with that in place I just grab some more little pieces of patterning material. Now these are oversized so what I do is I drop this little stick on here. This is a little fid for my gap. Put that on the lap. Mark where it crosses the other lap. Then I chop that off. That's going to fit there. Good. And then we put a little glue on the back side and we just slip it into position. There we go. I'm just going to put a little weight on here. That's going to keep it from bouncing around as I fit these guys. And then we just do that again. In some cases I'm having to sort of chop back the edge of this pattern a little because the, the last one overlaps it a bit. I want them to just all lie nice and flat. Now regardless of what technique I decide to use for the frames, this is still going to be useful because this is going to help speed up the final fitting. Once I've made up my blanks, I can just lay these on there and get my final plank shape.
Ow, ow, that hurt. Oop, I'm running shy on my length there. I have some wider stock to use where these things get too shy. Oh, looks like I can just squeeze on that one. Here, what I'm going to do is just add a little, patch these two together here so they stay put. One more down here. The bottom one, I'm not stepping it off with that little stick. I'm just going right to the corner. And then I'm adding one more little offcut just on the bottom to pick up that the angle of the floor. Okay. So with that done, I'm just just lightly sketching in where these lie. I don't have to worry about hitting these marks exactly. It's just a kind of a reminder of exactly the orientation here. Now I want to pick up some angles on the back side. All right now back here I'm just picking up the angle square to the from the plank to the pattern here. And I'm just going to lay it directly on the backs of the patterns and I do this. I do a little mark to indicate which angle I'm picking up. That's the same. So I'm just going to Scrabble a little S on there to indicate it's the same as the last one. Got a little glue on that edge, so that's going to be problematic. Let me just see. I'll just pick up this one instead. A slight difference in orientation of my uh, battens here, or my little sticks. Anyway, it'll be okay. All right, and that's it. That's my pattern. Just mark what frame number it is on here, and then we'll move on to the next. Uh, one, two, three. That was four. This one's five. There we go. Just carry this right up to my next station location and do it again. Here is the system I have come up with for doing this. It's a little bit odd, but um, it, it seems like it works. It's working out okay. So you got a spacer here. This is just sort of um, give me a rough dimension for one end of my frame, and I'm, I am going to be laminating on top of these. So this is basically like a, a sawn frame uh, foundation with a, a lamination on top to help sort of tie everything together. So I've got my pattern here for my frame. I got the frame head up at this end. So I'm giving myself just a bit of space above the shear just for the hell of it. I'm dropping that on top of there like so. And I give myself a, you know, about an eighth of an inch or something like that of slop. Put that there and then I'm taking my square here and I'm slipping that underneath the pattern and I'm adjusting the square until it sort of splits the difference across whatever the, the gap is here, the leftovers, and giving myself that same eighth of an inch sort of slop. So I overhang that a little bit, shift it around until it looks good. That looks good to me there. So I'm just going to drop a stick across there. And this is just telling me where to do my off cut. And the only reason I'm doing it here as opposed to closer to this is just so that when I'm done, I'm going to be 
just joining things up at the, at the heel here, just for simplicity's sake. So there's that. So that's going to be my one piece of frame. And then I'm going to use the, the other half of it for the next piece of frame. And what I'm doing while I'm looking at this here is I'm looking to see if this is sort of covering off the, my tail end of my joint here, whether or not it goes far enough. And that's about right. Give myself a little extra maybe. So I need a good 10 inches. So down here at the tail end of the stick, I'm going to give myself my 10 inches there. Slide this out. Mark that there. And it's in frame number five. So I'm going to go to the bandsaw right now. I'm going to buck that off there and I'm going to buck that off there. Okay, that one goes to there. We'll chop that. This one goes on here. We'll chop that. Mark that as my frame head. Okay, now I take these two tail pieces. And I'm just going to clean that up over on the belt sander here. So what's going to happen is we're going to stick those together like that. We're going to stick those together like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to line these up down here at the heel. We're going to glue this together. Drop that on there. That's going to be eventually cut out of there. And I can already see that I need, I need some filler up in here. Okay. So just to demonstrate, that's going to be a plank line right there. This is my space here. That's going to tell me how much more I need to be to the inside of my curve. So this is going to be my, my thickness before I add my, Dub my uh, laminations on top, right? So I just need a small filler piece in here, and I think I'm just gonna I'm gonna make all my these things up, and then I'll come back and I'll just quickly knock out a bunch of these filler pieces so that I can drop those in last. But for the moment, uh, that's all I'm doing. That's that's gonna be my frame stock right there. I'll lay out some lines, drop a batten on there, and then I will cut that out. And then we'll have a female mold basically for my laminations. That's the one part I don't really like about this. So I have to decide how I want to deal with the fact that it's a female mold. I'll probably use like a bunch of plastic battens, like stack a few up so it's heavier and there's more, it spreads out more clamping pressure or something like that. Anyhow, that's the idea. Okay. So I got all my framing stock cut and fitted. I'm just going to do a glue up, get a mixing pot because I'm doing a whole bunch of stuff. I want a sort of a larger mixing pot. And I, I tend to I use those little Dixie cups a lot of the time. But if I got to keep putting something down, you want something with a bigger base. So milk carton and uh, I usually try and shoot for cube. So start right on the seam, start where it's, where it's glued together. Otherwise it doesn't have the structure to make it through there. You go down, 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 down. Okay, there we go. Recycle that, put that to use. Um, how much to make? Uh, fitting small stuff like this is always difficult. I'll bet I can do it with, I'm going to guess two shots, two shots. I'm going to mix them wet and jammy and do this in one glue up and not going to mess around with wetting out partially because I'm going to be adding that lamination onto it. I think it'll be fine. Okay. 
Like to go with a good solid <clears throat> 30 seconds to a minute of mixing with the drill on the resin there. I think today we'll use uh, the 405 filleting blend. If you if you're gonna go with um, just one variety of filler, make it either the colloidal silica, the 206, or the filleting blend 205. I think. I mean, <clears throat> of course. There are others. You can use the others one. The others are they're all fine. Check the manual. Some of them are better for some stuff than others. For general bonding, 206 and 205 both get a high rating. I don't need to worry about the sagging properties in this particular glue up because it's just tight joints everywhere. So I'll use a little bit of both. What the hell? I honestly don't know why I don't just have like a can of 50-50 mix of colloidal silica and filleting blend because I mix the two so frequently. Here we go, that'll be perfect. We're trying to keep it wet enough that we don't have to worry about the wet out, but uh, give it enough body that it's going fill, to fill gaps without sagging out of them. So that's about right. Yeah, okay, we'll go with that. If you thicken it too much, you can't stretch it as far either. You can't, you can't get it into as many bits and pieces. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna tack it all together with the um, brad nailer here. Let's see, how do I wanna do this? Maybe what we'll do is, okay, get rid of the stick. That to the side. Okay, that looks pretty good. Here's number one. Look at me running all over the shop, not prepared. Hey, quick little cleanup of that. Just a light wipe down. This is all I'm going to do is just put them down on the bench and leave them alone. The glue up is complete, everything looks okay. So uh, tomorrow we'll cut out the foundation of these frames and then we'll laminate on the, uh, the little doublers, we can call them. I think we'll probably go half inch lamination, so like four layers. Um, they look so small. <laughs> I'd like, I wish they were a bit heavier. I mean, my um, the stock I had on hand just, it was, not as thick as it could have been. It's just the way some you get some sawyers that are really good about making sure that when they cut, they uh, they cut a little just a hair oversized so that me the customer gets something that approaches like a full inch of rough thickness. More often than not, they're all they cut out they're cutting like right on the line or a hair under the line, and uh, so at best I can get three quarters of an inch out of it. But you know when things are done nicely, I can usually. I can usually bet on getting seven eighths of an inch. Uh, not this case though, but this was the uh, material I had at my disposal. So we'll, we'll have to go with it. There's one thing I thought about doing and that is to beef them up. What I could do, I actually kind of like this idea, is do my cutout that I need to do next and then glue all of them 
to a layer of plywood because we have some leftover ply or if not that I've, I've got other ply on hand maybe even just add an eighth of an inch of plywood and that will like really beat these up and then when I, it's almost like silly to add the plywood and then add a lamination over top because that's kind of defeating the purpose I'll think about that Joe wants to be able to like get his fingers in behind stuff so he wants some deeper frames for that anyhow that's it for today I'm gonna call it a call it a night go upstairs yell at the children that sounds like a good way to start off the evening okay ciao for now folks catch you later all right folks we're gonna stop right here for today but we're gonna pick it up where we left off next week now, I want to thank you all for joining me and I want to remind you that these videos are supported by my followers on Patreon and you can join me on Patreon by following the links in the corner down in the description. And I want to thank all of my Patreon supporters all the time for their ongoing support. It's really, really helpful and I'd love it if you could join me too. Now there's a lot to this framing process and I'd like to share all the sort of ins and outs with you and this is a spoiler alert. My first kick of the can will not be 100% successful. You'll see what I mean in a later episode. Okay, so that's it for this week, folks. I'll see you later.